now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Faber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. As I was walking down the beach in bright and sunny day. Yeah, you know what this one is. Phil Harris and Alice Faye. What is the thing? <laughs> this episode where Remley's trying to babysit. Uh, this episode came from, it was originally broadcast on NBC December 3rd of 1950. From Hollywood, the Bill Harris Alice Bay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Bill Harris Alice Bay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Scharf and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Bay and Bill Harris. <laughs> The Harrises are a typical married couple. Through the years, they've had their arguments and differences, but never once have they had a serious fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> However, for the past three weeks, their relations have been a bit strained, and right now, things seem to be at the breaking point. Phil, I can't stand any more of this. We've always been honest with each other. You've never kept anything from me until now. After all, I've been a good wife to you, and I'm the mother of your children, and I've got a right to know. What is the thing? <laughs> is that all you want to know? <coughs> Honey, don't scare me like that. For a minute, I thought you found out about that red-headed car hop that... Woo! <laughs> Uh, honey, you see the thing Never is... mind that, Philip Let's get back to the red-headed car hop <laughs> She can wait I want to know what the thing is Phil, are you going to tell me or aren't you? Honey, I can't tell you I've been sworn to secrecy If it ever got out what the thing is It would be the end The end of what? The royalties on my record <laughs> I can't understand why that record is such a big hit There's nothing to the tune The lyrics are childish And as for your voice... Ugh. I think Daddy's record is wonderful So do I In fact, we brought it to school yesterday And we played it all day long for the teacher Hey, nice going, kids And I'll bet that she loved every... Hey, wait a minute Why aren't you kids in school today? We've been expelled <laughs> The teacher expelled you because you played my record for her? I'm going down to see her. I'm going to tell her off. It won't do any good, Daddy. We tried to reason with her. Well, what did she say? Nothing. She just sat there staring straight ahead and going... <laughs> you see, Philip, that's what the teacher thinks of your record. That don't prove nothing. That's just one intellectual's opinion. In fact, Victor sold so many records that I have to go down today and record it again with a band. And I'd better leave now or I'll be late. I'll see you later, Alice. Uh, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Okay, fellas. All right, fellas. What do you mean? All right, you can break. All right, put the cards away, will you? All right, let's drop everything. Get that change off the table. Let's have it quiet. Now pick up that stuff. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> I have good news for you. I've just received the first check from RCA Victor for the royalties made on our recording of the thing. Due to your fine musicianship, your excellent arrangement, your unceasing efforts, I have made $10,000. <laughs> Are there any questions, gentlemen? <laughs> yeah! Where's the cabbage and where do we get our mitts on it? Let's knock them down and roll them! Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, you fellas won't have to resort to force. 
I am not forgetting your contribution to the success of this record. I had the check cashed, and I have the money right here. Now, if you'll all get in line and walk slowly past me, you may feel the money. <laughs> We're tired of feeling the stuff. We want to keep a little of it. All right, all right, Artie. I want to be fair about this. I happen to be the leader, and I think I ought to keep the money. But if any of you have any suggestions for a better distribution of the loot, now is the time to stand up and keep his big mouth shut. <laughs> Let's get settled down and rehearse the thing once more before we record it. We ain't gonna do it. Why not? I don't like the song. Well, what's the matter with you, Sammy? You never like any songs I do. How come? I don't know. Unless it's because you got such a lousy voice. <laughs> I like Phil's voice, and I like the songs he does, too. But some guys won't say to get a raise. All right. <laughs> hey, Artie. Do, uh... Do you really like my voice? Sure, and I like the thing. It reminds me of my wife. <laughs> it does? Yeah, that's where I found her, in a box on a beach. Oh. <laughs> All right. you ought to be ashamed of yourself talking about your wife that way. How can you say such things about such a sweet, lovable person? Have you ever seen my wife? No. Then shut up. <laughs> Look, Artie, that's no way to talk to your leader. Now, you're going to rehearse the thing with me, or aren't you? No, we want our share of what you make in a record. Well, man. Yeah. All right, fellas, all right. All right. I'm the captain of this crew. <laughs> One more uprising such as this and I'll cut your rum ration. <laughs> Trouble with you guys is you don't do anything unless you get paid for it. Money, 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 money. That's all you think of. The only one who hasn't asked for anything is Remley. And do you know why? Yeah, he ain't here yet. <laughs> oh. No wonder I didn't hear the sound of his greedy little voice. <laughs> Where is Remley? He's doubling up on another job so he can make a living. <laughs> you mean to tell me that he's taking another job on my time? If there's one thing that I can't stand, it's a no good two time and chiseling, no talent, double cross. Curly, I overheard what you just said, and congratulations. <laughs> congratulations? Yeah, it takes a big man to admit his own fault. <laughs> Look, Frankie, I'm. You're everything you said you are, and a little more, too. I would have added cheap penny pinching piker. What do you mean, cheap penny pinch and pike? If you paid me a living wage, I wouldn't be forced to take another job. That's what I want to talk to you about, buddy. Look, what's the idea of taking another job? I had to. I can't live on what you pay me. Cost of living's gone up. Why, do you realize how much they've increased the bare necessities of life? No, how much? Twenty cents on a fifth. <laughs> Next thing you know, they'll be raising the price of food. <laughs> that will never affect you. Now, what's this extra job you got, Remley? Oh, something I happen to be well-suited for. I'm a babysitter. <laughs> You're a what? A babysitter. I get 50 cents an hour to sit with a baby. A baby what? <laughs> Nobody's gonna trust you with a human child. They wouldn't, huh? I run a baby service for mothers who have to go to work. I had 18 of them over the house this morning. I just got through returning them. Well, good. Now, maybe you can forget about that other job for a while and concentrate on this one. We have a rehearsal to do. Well, you'll have to call it off. I'm too tired. <laughs> what are you tired from? A musician works from sun to sun, but a babysitter's work is never done. <laughs> Taking care of kids is a great responsibility, and I'm fully aware of the trust placed in me. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are. After all, tiny tots are like delicate flowers. They must be handled with gentleness, tenderness, loving care. <laughs> Quiet, Myrtle. <laughs> so I was saying, Curly, the infant must be handled with extreme Wait a minute, caution. just a minute. What was that short burst on the bagpipe? Uh? <laughs> That's Myrtle. Who's Myrtle? One of the babies. I haven't returned her yet. Now, as I was saying, kids... Hey, Remley, where have you got her? 
In my guitar case. <laughs> Thank you, TV Wiggles. <laughs> Look, will you get Sparkle Plenty out of that case and let me see her before she suffocates? What's the matter with she you? She won't suffocate. I got air holes in the case. Will you open that case and take her out? Okay. You ought to be a shit. Hey. Uh. <laughs> hey, Remley, is she a cute little thing? Hey, honey, come here to Uncle Phil, Z. <laughs> oh, you're such a cute um baby, um. <laughs> Uncle Phil, Z, will Z like them, you? Indian baby talk yet. <laughs> Uncle Phil, Z, think of you as Snooky Yukums. You like them, Uncle Phil, Z, will Z? If she spits in your eye, I wouldn't blame her. <laughs> Myrtle's a half kid. She don't go for that corny baby talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I got to admit she's a honey, isn't she? Hey, Remley. Huh? Hey, let me hold her a minute. Uh, hey, uh, hey. Hey, Myrtle. How would you like to, uh, to... Hey, Remley, I got news for you. <laughs> This ain't a Myrtle, it's a Clyde. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at the bib. It's blue and it says his on it. <laughs> now that I think of it, I did return Myrtle. Which kid is this? Well, don't ask me. This doggie's from your herd. <laughs> Didn't you have him branded? Well, I had tags with the names and addresses on them. This one must have swallowed his tag. <laughs> oh, well, that's life, I always say. <laughs> Remley, how can you be so nonchalant? You got one kid left over. <laughs> so what? Out of 18, that's not a bad batting average. <laughs> Look, Remley, you got to get rid of this kid. What for? Don't you realize by now the mother must have called the police? She probably thinks you stole the kid. The police must have a drag now to, uh, dragnet out already with orders to shoot to kill. Kill? Yeah, and the person they find with that baby is going to get the hot seat for being a kidnapper. Curly, I have good news for you. Why? You have just become the father of a bouncing baby boy named Clyde. <laughs> here he is and wear him in good health. So long, Curly. Come back here, will you? Don't try to palm this kid off on me. I ain't no fence for no hot babies. Well, <laughs> hold it just for a while, Curly. Give me a chance to concentrate. Maybe I can remember who his mother is. <laughs> well, hurry up, will you? I'm not going to hold this kid all day no, while honey, he... I was just passing by. And... <laughs> oh, well, you've had a busy morning, haven't you, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, don't be silly. What's this? And don't tell me it's the thing. <laughs> Still, I demand an explanation I can explain This is a baby Oh, you must have peed <laughs> I know what it is I want to know whose it is It's mine, Alice Frankie, you mean No, I don't <laughs> I was babysitting with a lot of kids this morning And I got one left over I can't remember who the mother is Oh, Frankie, that's awful The mother's probably frantic with worry We've got to find her Even if we have to go from house to house Oh, now, wait a minute Don't cry, baby Hey, Alice Look at him Ain't he a cutesy wootsy? Yeah, he's a dalsy walsy Are we all gonna talksy walksy like that? <laughs> Look, if we're gonna find the kid's mother We better get started All right all right, Clyde, now just take it easy. <laughs> well, stop whining. We'll get you back home. Hey, I'll tell you what. You be a good boy, and I'll sing the thing for you. <laughs> Everybody's a critic. He sells a million records, and this little wise guy don't... Where you been, under a rock, Clyde? <laughs> Please. Oh, with a brain like that, he'll never be nothing but a baby. I'm not gonna fool with him. Oh, like... will you please be quiet? You can't get mad at the child just because he doesn't like your voice. Ah, <laughs> uh, tell you what, little honey, I'll sing for you. <laughs> oh, pipe down! <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking whether you like.
like it or not. December 3rd, 1950, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. While Alice sings to the baby, uh, we'll take a quick break. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox here on your favorite station. Let's find the baby's parents. Uh, Phil Harris and Alice Faye, December 3rd, 1950. Hey, Alice, I'm getting tired of walking around trying to find the mother of this baby. Thank goodness the kid fell asleep. Oh, I'm tired, too. We've been to 30 houses, and the baby doesn't belong to any of them. What are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. Let's take the kid down to the city pound. <laughs> Remley, that's for dogs. Now, fellas, there are only a few more houses on the block. Let's try them. Okay, I'll try this house. Go ahead. Pardon me, madam. Are you the mother of this child? Ow! (laughs) What'd she slap me for? I don't know, unless it's because of that sign over the door. What sign? Encino Home for Old Maids. (laughs) Uh, Come on, we'll try another house. Hey, wait a minute. I've got an idea. What's that? Well, look, how about Joe Galetti's house? I know they got a lot of kids. Maybe this is one of theirs. Let's go over and find out. Hello, Mrs. Galetti. Is one of your children missing? I don't know. I have not looked in the last couple of days. (laughs) You want I should take a peek? Well, Miss Galetti, you mean you don't know if one of your own children is missing? How can I be sure if one is a missing? I'm not even sure how many we got. <laughs> it's maybe 15 or 16 or 22. Oh, just a minute. I call my husband. Hey, Joe, how many kids do we got? I don't know. I thought that you was keeping a score. <laughs> wants us to know how many kids have we got. Well, I do, Mr. Galetti. You see, we... Why, look who's he. That's uh, my favorite, the glamour girl. Oh, you're the most beautiful woman in a picture. Uh, <laughs> I never miss one of your pictures. Oh, I'm so happy to see you, Miss... Uh, miss... Uh, uh, what's the name again? Uh, Alice Faye. No, that's not your name. <laughs> Oh, your name is, uh, is, uh... Betty Grable? No, that's not even a warm. <laughs> uh, she's, uh, she's, uh... Gloria Swanson. That's a she is. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you again, Mrs. Swanson. Hey, I like you very much in the Sunset Boulevard. Thanks loads. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my husband. Oh, you don't have to introduce him. I don't know Eric von Stroheim any place. <laughs> Hi, Max. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> in, a, in a sunset of boulevards, you had a ball ahead. But I like you better this way with a curly scalp. <laughs> hey, Mr. Galati, maybe you and your wife can help us. Oh, huh? sure. What do you want us to do? Me and Marie will help any way we can. Well, I just want to know one thing. Is this your baby? Let me see. No. This a baby ain't one of mine. She's one of yours, and Marie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think she's one of mine. But if you won, she's a nice the baby. You can leave me. Marie, what's the matter for you? You crazy? <laughs> we got enough of trouble with a stork. Don't start taking her from a stranger. <laughs> well, that's that. Now we've tried every house in the neighborhood. What are we going to do now? Wait a minute. I have an idea. Let's take the baby to the children's shelter. Children's? Yeah. Hey, that's it. That's it. They'll find the mother for us. Well, come on. Let's go. Hey, Alice.
Alice, do you really think that they'll take the baby here? Oh, of course they will. They do a lot of wonderful work for children, and it's run by a very sweet old lady, Phil. All right, well, look, you wait in the car, honey, and we'll take the baby in. Come on, Remley. Yeah. Hey, Curly, just so we don't have any trouble, let's leave the kid on the doorstep and run. <laughs> December 3rd, 1950, Phil Harris and Alice Faye. The conclusion next on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. But first... The show really should have been called the Phil Harris, Alice Faye, and uh, Elliot Lewis show. Or the Phil Harris, Alice Faye, Frankie Remley show. Because, you know, he was just as important. Well, uh, you know, and <laughs> December 3rd, 1950. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I wouldn't do a thing like that. I'm going to ring the bell. What trouble can we have? Alice says this place is run by a sweet old lady, and I'm going to... Oh, how do you do, madam? I'd like to talk to you. What's on your mind, Mac? <laughs> this is a sweet old lady? <laughs> Julius, what are you doing here? Never mind me. What are you doing here? I came down because I need help. You came to the wrong place. This ain't where you take the cure. <laughs> Frank, you don't have to take no cure this week. <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you carrying in your arms there? Our baby. Oh. And which one of you two guys is the mother? <laughs> Neither of us is the mother. <laughs> Whose baby is it? Well, if you must know, it's Frankie's. Oh, this is quite a surprise. He never told me you were married, Mr. Remley. Who's the unlucky girl? <laughs> there is no girl. Okay, then who's the unlucky alligator? <laughs> Mr. Remley, if you're the father of this child, who's the mother? What's her name? I can't remember. I just met her for the first time this morning. <laughs> you met her for the first time this morning, and now you have a baby. I suppose a fair stork with a strong tailwind could make it. <laughs> Look, kid. Frankie ain't the father of this baby. Some woman left it with him this morning and he can't remember who she is. Hey, this must be the Kramer baby. His mother's been calling in all day to find out if somebody brought him here. That's the name, Kramer. Well, thank goodness we <laughs> found... Hey, Alice, come on in here. We found out who the baby belongs to. Belongs to Mrs. Kramer. Oh, that's wonderful, Phil. I feel much better now. Well, Julius, what are you doing here? Hi, Miss Faye. I come down once in a while to entertain the kids. Today I put on a comedy radio show for him. Oh, did the children like it? No, I was too childish for them. <laughs> they said it was one of the dumbest turkeys they ever heard. Well, naturally. You don't know nothing about writing a radio program. If you were smart, you would have used one of my old radio scripts. That's the trouble, I did. <laughs> Where'd you get one of my scripts? I called your house and your girls brought it over. I played your part, Mr. Harris. Yeah? How'd you do in it? I gotta admit, I didn't get as many laughs as you did. That's because you're not a comic. If you did it the way I did it, you would have gotten howled. I know, but I didn't want to drop my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Were our girls in the play, Julia? Yeah, little Phyllis was in it. And you know, Mr. Harris, when it comes to acting, that kid of yours makes you look like a cigar store Indian. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Did you hear that, Frankie? Little Phyllis is a better actor than me. That figures. <laughs> She's got more talent. Maybe she has more talent, but I have a certain lovable charm that she will never be able to touch. <laughs> oh, Phil, stop being such a ham. You should be happy that our girls have talent. After a while, they'll be able to take over and support you. After all, dear, I can't work forever. All right. <laughs> We finished writing new lyrics for the song and we... Oh, hello, Mommy. Hiya, Daddy. Oh, Daddy, we have a big surprise for you. You do? What surprise? You know that song you made famous? Which one, my dear? 
<laughs> Roses of Bacardi? <laughs> Or the glow worm? <laughs> or there's a girl in the heart of Dixie with a watch that belongs to me? <laughs> that was the novel, eh? The last novel, eh? No, Daddy. We wrote new lyrics for the thing. New lyrics to the thing? It's doing all right the way it is. What are you trying to do? Kids steal my underwear? What's the matter with you? But, Daddy, we have a good idea. We're trying to get toys for unfortunate children at Christmas. Toys for unfortunate children at Christmas. Well, hey, that sounds like a swell thought, kids, but but where does the thing fit into it? Well, we want people to send, in the form of a toy, what they might think is the thing. Yes, we're going to call it the thing for kids. Oh, but honey, according to the lyrics of the song, most people think the thing is something horrible. That's why we wrote new lyrics. Would you like to hear them, Daddy? Sure I would. Are you ready? I'll give you a downbeat. While we were walking down the street one happy Christmas day, we saw a funny-looking thing that someone threw away. We went right over to look at it, and much to our surprise, oh, we discovered a broken toy right before our eyes. Yes, they discovered a broken toy right before their eyes. We picked it up and ran right home to show it to our dad. He said he'd try to fix it up, and we were very glad. Cause then we take it and give it to some little girl and boy who might be happy on Christmas Day if they could have the toy. Yes, they would be happy on Christmas Day if they could have the toy. The moral of this story is if you've got anything that you don't want or you can't use, or you might think the thing Don't throw it away, just send it in That's our advice to you Cause you'll be helping some children have a Merry Christmas too Yes, you'll be helping some children have a Merry Christmas too Folks, this is Phil again, and I think the kids have a great idea. If we can make the unfortunate children happy at Christmas time, it'll make our holiday a lot happier, too. So if you have some usable toys lying around the house, remember that there are kids in your town who would like to have them. And if you don't have any old toys and you feel like sending new ones, we'd love it. Don't wait until the last minute. Send a thing for kids to a needy kid now. Thank you. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. We know you'll come through for the children, and good night. Good night. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Ollie O'Toole, Jody Gilbert, Mel Blanc, and Jack Crucian. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis, and Julius was played by Walter Tetley. And remember... Three chimes mean good times on NBC. You gotta love it. Tagging off of his hit record, send a thing to kids for the children. You know, that was was really neat. I like that. Uh, Phil Harris, Alice Faye, December 3rd, 1950 on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, Jim and Marion Jordan as we head to Wistful Vista and see what's going on in the household of Fibber McGee and Molly. The Fibber McGee and Molly Show. Every weekday at this time, NBC brings you Fibber McGee and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista is up to his ears in a snapshot contest. He went downtown early this morning with his camera and a pocket full of film, and he's back home now triumphant as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. 
And I just happened to be there, Jerry at the rat hole, when she did it with my camera, Molly. I mean, I was there with my camera when she did it. I, I don't mean she did it with my camera, of course. I know, I know. Uh... Yeah, oh, what a picture. There she was in the middle of the street carrying the babies, and traffic was pretty thick, and the cop swallowed his whistle, so I got her picture with my camera. Oh, what a scoop. Whose picture? Whose picture did you get? With that camera of mine, Tootsie. I got all three of them, Eloise and both the babies. Eloise, who in the world is Boy, it? oh boy, I'll cop that camera shop prize with this picture for sure. I'm telling you, when Eloise stepped across them streetcar tracks with her little tail in the air and them kittens in her mouth, traffic stopped for three blocks. Who is Eloise? Eloise? Well, she's Kramer's drugstore's cat, naturally. Oh, naturally. She was, weren't you listening to me, Molly? I was trying to, dearie. I guess I don't listen fast enough. You'll either have to learn to talk slow or I'll have to have my ears speeded up. Well, I was downtown at 14th and Oak a while ago when I heard all this horn honking, see? Yeah. I shoved my way through the crowd, hopped up on the hood of a parked car to get a better view, and there it was. All them cars skidding to a stop while Kramer's cat carried her kittens nonchalantly across the street in her mouth. Oh, that must have been a cute sight. Oh, it was. <laughs> Should make a wonderful picture. You said it. If this shot don't win that 50-buck prize for the most unusual picture of the week, I'm going to trade my camera in for a tuba and blow my brains out with it. Are you sure you were the only one there with a the camera? Oh, no, there was one other guy there, but just as he was about to shoot his picture, somebody accidentally ran into him, knocked the camera right out of his hand. Boy, was he sore. I can imagine. He even threatened to punch me in the nose. But that cop came over and broke it up. McGee, you don't mean you bumped the man and made him... You said it. For 50 bucks, kiddo, this is business. Oh, I can't wait to get this roll of film developed and get a gander at that prize picture. I'm going to take it upstairs to my dark room right now and run it through the developer. By dark room, I take it you mean the closet in Uncle Dennis's room, where you ruined six rolls of film and three of my spare blankets yesterday. Oh, well, that was an accident. The film all turned black because there was light leaking in some place in the dark room. It won't happen this time. Where was the light coming from? I forgot to close the dark room door. Hmm. What about my blankets? Well, gee whiz, I didn't know that developing stuff would stain blankets. I'll take a towel in this time to wipe my hands on. Oh, boy, you don't learn how to develop pictures overnight, you know. Well, don't let anybody bother me, Tootsie. Ah, wait till you see these pictures. That does sound like a cute picture he took. And the poor lad certainly deserves to win a prize the way he's been working at it. Funny. He hasn't taken a picture of me since we went to the World's Fair in Chicago. And yesterday he took 37 of them. <laughs> then he took them right upstairs to his dark room and ruined them. Ah, oh, well. Grocery boy! Set them on the sink, Mr. Oldtimer. How are you today? Just fine, daughter. Hi, bird. Where's Johnny, daughter? I'm talking to her, bird. McGee is upstairs in the spare closet. Oh, been a bad boy again, has he? No, no, he Cause just... Because that's the way you gotta be with that boy, daughter. You gotta be stern. That's the way Papa was with us kids, when us kids was just kids' daughter. Really? Oh, when we got into trouble, Papa used to say to us, Kids, he'd say. Kids what? We never heard the rest of it. When Papa spoke in that tone of voice, us kids just leapt out the window. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say Johnny did, daughter? I didn't say he did anything. He's yes, just... sir, when Papa hollered, us kids jumped. He wouldn't take no back talk, Papa wouldn't. Pretty firm, was he? Well, he did get a little flabby around the tummy in his later years, but he was pretty firm when I was a boy. <laughs> yes, sir, Papa ruled that house with an iron hand. An iron hand, huh? Yep. Sawed it off a statue of General Custer one Halloween. <laughs> Brung it home in his pocket. My goodness, you mean to tell me your father would deface a statue like that? No, he dehanded it, daughter. Sawed the hand off. Hmm. He always tried to... See... How long are you going to keep Johnny locked up in the closet? All day? Oh, he isn't locked up at all. He went up there to develop some snapshots he took. Oh, pictures, huh? Yes, he has to develop them in a dark room, you see. So he went into the closet and closed the door. Well, now that's a mighty fine hobby for the boy, daughter. You make him stay with it. Taking pictures, you mean, or developing them? No, sitting in a dark closet. Keeps him out of trouble. <laughs> if he gets out, tell him hello. So long. <laughs> Here's your bird seed, and here's your fresh water. There. Yes. Daddy's upstairs. He's developing a picture. No, Daddy ain't. He just came down, kiddo. Oh. <laughs> well, where's the picture? How'd the negative come out? Is it good? No, don't you worry. It'll be great. 
It's got to soak up there in the tray of water for a few more minutes before I can bring it out in the light and look at it. Well, I'm anxious to see it myself. I do hope it's good. Now, who's this? Come in. Hello, folks. Oh, it's you, Wimp. You don't need to ring the bell, Mr. Wimple. No. As long as you're a house guest here, you just walk right in and out like we do. Well, thank you, Mrs. McGee. I brought your mail in. Oh, thanks, Wimp. Let's have it. Here you are. Uh, just a postcard. Oh, from Uncle Dennis McGee, bless his heart. Yeah, it's from California. The land of sunshine, they say. It says, dear niece and nephew, am here in California just drinking in the scenery. <clears throat> Glass at a time, probably. Just read the postcard, McGee. Mm -hmm. Oh, it says, I'm coming east soon and will pay you a visit. Oh. Wonderful, wonderful. Does he say when he's coming? No, oh, just says, had planned to drive back for Thanksgiving with a fellow named Reardon. Reardon? Yep. He turned out to be a crook, so I ditched him. You know me. I always like my Irish straight. <laughs> Love, Uncle Dennis. Ah, oh, dear Uncle Dennis. Yeah, I was thinking of him today. You know, I was thinking of you downtown this morning, Mr. McGee. What happened? Somebody blow cigar smoke in your face, Mr. Wimple? No, but if I'd had my brownie, I could have gotten a wonderful picture for you to use in that contest, Mr. McGee. Yeah, what was it? Well, it was the cutest thing. Down at 14th and Oak... A mother cat carried her two little kittens across the street while all the cars stopped. Yeah, it did, huh? A friend of mine told me later that he tried to take a picture of it, but some big clobber head, those are his quotes, uh -huh. some big clobber head bumped into him and ruined it. Isn't that terrible? Imagine anybody doing that. Very uncouth. I was down there myself this morning, Wimp, and I had an even worse experience. I had a fellow with a camera in his hand threatened to punch me right in the nose. Good gracious. But I got the picture just the same, and hey, it ought to be ready to look at the negative by now. Hold tight, you kids. You're about to get a preview of the prize picture of the week. I hope it's good. Oh, photography is such fun, Mrs. McGee. I used to belong to a camera club, you know. In fact, I was the prize photographer. Oh, I didn't know you were so talented. Prize photographer of the club, huh? Yes. I was the photographer who photographed the prizes the other photographers won for their photographs. I suppose with a truly negative personality, one can hardly... I got it, Molly, I got it. The negative is all dry and it looks great. I haven't got a good look at it yet, but it looks great. Oh, I'm so glad. Hold it up to the light. Let's see the cat and the kittens. Don't touch it, don't touch it. Get fingerprints on it. Let me see now, which one is it? There's 12 on the roll and I got... Isn't this it? Which one, which one? There. I can't quite make it out, but it looks like a big mangy cat carrying something in its mouth. Oh, no, that's no cat. That's the football coach from the high school. He always wears his raccoon coat. Uh, what's he got in his mouth? Looks like a kitten, doesn't it? That's Toops' dog. I forgot to turn the film. My prize winner's on here somewhere. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. I should have remembered it's the last one on the roll. Oh, that's a good one, Mr. McGee. What is it? What is it? My gosh, it's as clear as a weatherman's picnic promise. Take a look at that, Molly. That is a good clear negative, McGee. Why? Look at those cars there. That convertible. That sedan. Stop them right in their tracks. And look at the bus. You can even see the people looking out the window. Just amazing. Ah, that's that little German anthrax camera of mine, kiddo. That F-33 pure glass lens really stops the action dead. Yes, it does. In fact, you stopped the action a little too soon on this one, McGee. What you mean? The kittens haven't come on the scene yet. What? I can't find the kittens anyplace. Are you sure? Well, they were right in the middle of the street. Hey, let's see that. Oh, of all the dad ratted luck. Well, it's too bad. Well, they're there, all right. That dad ratted bus pulled right in front of me and spoiled the picture, just as I snapped it. I see it. I see the cat. Huh? Just her tail sticking out behind the bus. <laughs> see there? Her tail. That rat. That bus driving rat. He done that on purpose. I'll never spend another cent on them buses again as long as I live if I have to walk from here to return. I took that negative down at the camera shop and told them to make me an enlargement of it, Molly. Why? Well, it's too small to work with the way it is. And I figure an enlargement will make everything big, you see. Sounds likely. And then maybe I can take a knife and scrape that bus off of there, see? Because that cat is right behind the bus with her kittens, and if I get the bus scraped out of there, you don't think so? No, dearie. Oh, well, good night. Good night, all. NBC has brought you the Fibber, McGee, and Molly program, transcribed with Bill Thompson as the old-timer and Wallace Wimple. 
This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, McGee in the middle of a mess again. Fibber McGee and Molly, December 3rd, 1953, here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Gotta mention Ted at radiomemories.com. He's produced a whole bunch of uh, new shows, and they're not new shows. What he's done is he's been able to remaster and restore them so that they sound better than they did when they were originally on the air. Uh, and we, we're going to be hearing some episodes of uh, uh, Lum and Abner. They're just amazing. Uh, check out Ted, radiomemories.com, shows on cassette, CD, or flash drive for your computer. Tell them I sent you by, radiomemories.com. Our webpage, classicradio.stream. Stream our shows on demand. Learn about classic radio collecting. Contact me. You can find our social media links, and you can also buy me a copy to help us acquire great classic radio shows and keep our distribution channels going. Classicradio.stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. And thank this station for carrying Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station. 